And then tomorrow you'll get back your um, papers you did yesterday, and we'll talk about the actual graphs of these functions with those, okay? All right, so polar coordinates are another way to plot points. So normally we graph in what we call rectangular coordinates, where it's an X and a Y. We go left and right, and we go up and down, and that creates a point. Polar coordinates are an R and a theta instead of an X and a Y. R is your distance to the origin, and theta is an angle of rotation from what we're going to call, instead of the x-axis, we're going to call it the polar axis. And instead of the origin, we're going to call it the pole. This is really similar to what we did with vectors, which is why it pops up in this section. Vectors, we had a magnitude, which was the length of the vector, distance to the origin, and then we had a direction angle. So we also see that in these polar coordinates, instead of... Um, a magnitude and a direction angle, we've got this R and theta plus you, but basically the same thing, okay? So in order to plot a polar coordinate, you need to know how far from the origin you are from the pole and um, also the angle of rotation. Polar coordinates are not unique. Um, X, Y coordinates, rectangular coordinates are. If I give you an X and a Y, um, there's only one way to describe that point, left, right, up, down. Polar coordinates, because we have rotations, are not unique. So I can be all of these three units from the origin, from the pole, but all of these angles are different. I could rotate 60 degrees and get here, or I could do another full rotation, rotate 420 degrees and get here, or I could go back a full rotation, make it negative 300, and also end up at that exact same point. So because we have these um, rotations we can do in either direction, it's possible that there are numerous ways to describe a single point when we have polar coordinates. We say they are not unique. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is practice plotting some polar points. Um, and I'm, eh, we'll start with this one. Okay, um, if an R value is negative, this is going to be the only special case that we have to worry about. So um, R still tells us the distance to the origin. Normally when we graph, we go to the right if it's positive and the left if it's negative. So we're going to stick with that same rule when we graph polar coordinates. If I want to graph negative 4, 240 degrees, instead of going to the right four units, I would start by going to the left four units, which would take me to that left side of what looks like my x-axis there. From that point, then, we start the rotation. So if I have a positive angle, am I rotating clockwise or counterclockwise? It's counterclockwise if it's a positive angle. So that's way back from like chapter five earlier in the year. So from this point, I need to rotate counterclockwise 240 degrees. Well, if I rotate, that would be going down from here. 180 would take me to the right side of my axis. And then I need another 60 degrees. So my point would be located there. And there's a little note to the side there. The rays, um, the little lines you see going out are every 30 degrees on this called a polar graph. Um, when we see these concentric circles, each circle has a radius increasing by one, so the smallest circle has a radius one, the next circle has a radius two, so on and so forth, and then um, the rays coming out just label our angles. Okay, um, let's do, actually, let's just practice plotting some points, then we'll come back to that previous one. Okay, so if you go to this slide, this is slide four. We're going to practice plotting these, um, and we can do these together, I think, is fine. Okay, so 3, negative 45 degrees. So we're always going to start at the origin, at the pole. If it's a positive R, you're going to go to the right. If it's a negative R, you're going to go to the left. So I have a positive R. I'm going to go 3 to the right. And then from there, I need to rotate negative 45 degrees. So if it's a negative angle, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? clockwise, 45 degrees. So from here I would go down, 45 would put me right there, and I'm going to label that point A. Okay. 5 and pi over 2. So we're going to see ones that are degrees and radians. So 5, I'm going to go 5 to the right, 3, 4, 5, so that's the fifth circle out. It's the biggest circle in this one. And then pi over 2, it's a positive angle, so I'm going to rotate counterclockwise, we know pi over 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So point B is going to end up there. Okay. 2 and a half, 
5 pi over 6. So I'm going to go 2 and a half over to the right. And again, um, my circles are increments of 1, so I'm going to be between the second and the third circle. Not there. And then 5 pi over 6. How many degrees is 5 pi over 6? 150. And again, it's positive, so I'm going to rotate counterclockwise. 150 degrees. It's going to end up right there. There is point C. Okay. 4, 560 degrees. 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 560 is a full rotation plus how many more degrees? Plus another 200. So a full rotation would take me back to the start. Plus 200, well, there's another 180 if I go to the left, and then another 20 degrees. So it's about there. We're approximating this one. It would be point D. Okay, now we have a couple negative ones. Negative 1, 2 pi over 3. So negative 1, I'm going to go left, 1 to start. 2 pi over 3 is how many degrees? 120, and it's 120 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise? If it's a positive angle, we rotate counterclockwise. So from that point I plotted, I'm going to go 120 degrees counterclockwise, which is down. And every ray is 30, so you can count if you need to. 30, 60, 90, 120 will be right there. So that's point E. Okay. Negative 3. Negative pi over 6. So this one has a negative angle and a negative r value. I need a different color, which I don't think I have here, so we'll just reuse a color. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to go 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. Pi over 6 is how many degrees? 30. Okay, so this is negative 30 degrees is how far I have to rotate from what? that point on the left there on the x-axis. Um, if I'm rotating in a negative direction, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, 30 degrees will be one ray. So F and C are going to be really close together here. Okay, your last one is zero and then what is that? Four million something degrees? The zero tells me I am zero units from the pole, from the origin. So does it matter what my degree measurement is? Not really, because no matter how much I rotate, I'm still zero units from the pole, which means if that R value is zero, you are automatically on the pole. So that is where G is located. Okay? Make sense? Any questions plotting polar points? Okay. <clears throat> Next up, go back to that previous slide. All right, let's look at this problem at the bottom. It says plot the point to negative 150 degrees. And then for parts B, C, and D, we're going to find another set of coordinates that will get us to that same point with certain specifications. All right, so to negative 150, how do I graph that? What do I do first? Go to the right, 2. And then negative 150 tells me clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise, 150. So you can count every 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. There's my point P. Okay. So for part B, it says we want R now to be negative and theta to be between 0 and 360. So my first point, or part of my coordinate needs to be negative. My second part of my coordinate is going to be a positive number. All right, the R is the easiest part. You only have two choices to get to that point. If I am on the second circle out, my R is either a 2 or a negative 2. That's it, okay? And because we want it to be negative, it needs to be a negative 2. Now your job is to figure out What's the degree measurement we're looking for? All right, so if I'm going to plot this, I start by going to the left. Then I want a positive rotation. So from here, do I rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? 
counterclockwise. So that would be going down, right? So how much do I have to rotate to get to that point P? How many degrees? That's your answer. Negative 2, 30 degrees will also take you to point P. Okay. For the next one, we want still R to be negative, but this time you want your theta to also be negative. So my R is still a negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to start by going to the left. But this time if I want a negative angle, I'm going to rotate clockwise. So I'm going to go up. How much do I have to rotate to get back to point P? 330 for that one. Okay. There are formulas and things that can help you with this, but honestly, they're not even worth memorizing. It's easier just to plot the point and do the rotation yourself. The last one, we want R to be positive and theta to be positive. So what's my only option for R? 2. Okay, so if my R is 2, that means I start by going to the right 2, and then if my theta is positive, which way do I rotate? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, so I would go up. How many degrees? 2, 10. That's it. Okay. Any questions on those? Yes. For the second one, why isn't the um, theta and theta? Like, why is 330? Uh, oh, it was negative. We just, I just didn't put my negative there. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, that was a negative 330. Okay. Other questions on this one? Okay. All right. Did that already. Okay. On the next slide, there are four, let's call them mini formulas that you need to know. These four formulas come from just our right triangle trig step. First one you can see is just our Pythagorean theorem. If I have some point x, y, we could also label it r theta. <coughs> x is along my x-axis. Y is my y-axis, so those are the legs of my right triangle. R if you're talking about polar coordinates, it's the distance to the origin. So in this picture, that's the hypotenuse. Theta is your angle of rotation, but we can also use the theta inside the triangle. We call that a reference angle, and we did that back in the day. All right, so from this picture, two different ways to get to a single point P. Either x, y if it's rectangular coordinates, or r, theta if it's polar coordinates. We see these four relationships pop out of this picture. Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That one you can even take one step further. And you can make it the square root of x squared plus y squared equals r. Take the square root of both sides. Um, then if I, again, label that angle inside the triangle theta, theta prime, it's my reference angle, we see how we can get a tangent. The tangent of that angle theta is y over x, opposite over adjacent. The sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse, y over r. If I take that equation and multiply both sides by r, I get this guy. If I find the cosine in that triangle, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r. If I take both sides of that and multiply by r, I get x equals r cosine. We use these four formulas to convert between rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates or polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So let's say I have rectangular coordinates in x and y. I can use these two formulas to solve for r and theta. Or vice versa. If I have r and theta and I want x and y, I use these two coordinates and I'm able to solve for those. Okay? And then how we check it is there are points that are in the same location. So you can plot both of your points, the one you started with and the one you end up with, and make sure that they are in the same location. Okay. So that's the last thing we're going to do today is just practice converting. We're going to start by converting. Um, this is polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. If you have polar coordinates, you have an r and a theta. That's what you're given. If you want rectangular coordinates, you are searching for the x and the y. Okay? x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. When have we also seen that x goes with cosine and y goes with sine? 
Isn't that our unit circle? Right? Okay, so we see these same relationships popping up over and over again. All you have to do is plug your numbers in. Negative 3 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And that is a unit circle question now, right? What's the cosine of 60? It is a half. So my x coordinate is negative 3 halves. Do the same thing, but with sine, to get your y coordinate. The sine of 60. And 3 over 2. So I end up with negative 3, rad 3 over 2. My final answer would be the following coordinate negative 3 halves, negative 3, rad 3 over 2. If you want to check it, a quick way to do it, even without graphing it, is just think about what quadrant these points are located in. They should both be in the same quadrant. What quadrant's my answer in? That's a quick one. It's in quadrant three, right? Okay, in my original problem, the negative three tells me I would go to the left three, right? And then the 60 degrees, I would rotate counterclockwise, so down, 60, which would also place me in quadrant three. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, these should be in the same locations, just two different ways we're describing to get to the same point. Let's do one more of these. X equals R cosine. In this problem, R is two, theta is negative pi over four. I don't like negative angles. If it's a cosine, what can you do with that negative? Drop the negative or move it out front. These are our even odd identities. Drop it. Cosine is even. What is the cosine of pi over 4? That's right. Yeah. Rad 2 over 2 times 2 will give me just rad 2. 2 is canceled. Okay. To get the y, I'm doing R sine theta. 2 sine negative pi over 4. If there's a negative inside my sine function, what can I do with it? Drop it or move it out front? Move it out front. So now I have negative 2 sine pi over 4. Sine of pi over 4 is, again, rad 2 over 2. And I get negative rad 2. Final answer is rad 2, negative rad 2. If you're checking it, both of these would be in quadrant 3. A positive value and then a negative value would be in quadrant 4. Yep, and the one at the top there, you can see that one's quadrant 4. The one at the top, you would go right 2, and then you would rotate counter or clockwise, excuse me, down negative pi over 4, which would also put you in quadrant 4. All right, on those? Okay, last two problems. Convert the following to polar form. Now, because polar coordinates are not unique, there's a lot of different ways we can write them. They're specific on what answers they want. The easiest way that you can get these is make sure your r is positive and your theta is positive. We want all positive answers. Okay, all right, my x and y are 3 and 3. <coughs> Let's solve for r first. R is like the hypotenuse of our triangle. X and Y are the legs of the triangle. Pythagorean theorem. It's just like how we got the magnitude with our vectors. What's that going to give me? Square root of 18, which breaks down to 9 and 2, so 3 red 2. Okay. To get theta, remember tangent is y over x. It's just a unit circle ratio. y is 3, and x is 3. So tangent is equal to 1. This is a unit circle value. There are two answers to this question. 
where does tangent equal 1 on your unit circle? Pi over 4. You can give radians or... Uh, actually, it does say radians up there. 0 to 2 pi. Okay, pi over 4 is 1, and there's one more. In quadrant 3, only one of those is the right answer. How do I know which one to pick? That is a good question. Um, both of them will give you the same answer. What quad? Yeah, they're both positive. What quadrant's my point in? Quadrant one. And if I have a positive R. Which angle will place me in quadrant one? Pi over four. Okay? All right, you guys try the last one. Now we're done. Convert to polar coordinates. Four and four pi over three. When you square negative two rad three, the negative two gets squared, giving you four. The rad three gets squared, giving you three. Which then four times three gives you twelve under there. This guy's in quadrant three, so I make sure I change the angle in quadrant three. Okay. So um, you guys can get started on your. 7-6 Math XL if you want tonight. We've only got two more Math XL, guys. We're almost there. 7-6 Math XL is due on Friday night. Okay, so that's your next deadline. Friday night, Math XL. Any questions on the problem on the board? All right, we will finish this lesson tomorrow. Cell phone lotto. The winner is... 11. Someone is in there.